Let me guess, you thought blockchains were mutable. Interested to explore the mystery behind breaking the blockchain and discover what all this really means for your business? You thought blockchains were distributed, public, time-stamped and persistent? Guess what, they still are. Hi, I'm Peter Nickel, healthcare executive, passionate about digital innovation and blockchain. I work with small and large companies to explore blockchain's potential for healthcare and establish growth models for multi-sided digital platforms. Today, we'll be covering four major topics. First, Accenture's blockchain suggestion. Second, a bit of the history behind the ability to edit a blockchain. Third, permissionless versus permissioned blockchains. And last, fourth, the redactable blockchain. Let's start with private blockchains and Accenture's perspective. First, I don't represent Accenture. I have no affiliation with Accenture. My general opinion for what it's worth is that they actually do great work. Accenture cranks out a lot of white papers from consumer technology, digital banking, innovation, cybersecurity, digital health, and more. Their latest paper was good. I mean, it was really good. So good, in fact, I read the entire paper and decided to research all the different areas. Not just the published resources or references, but every reference to new ideas in line in the paper. I discovered a common theme. It was based actually on another paper, another paper I had read. Over the next five minutes, I'll share my insights on the research that established the foundation of the editable blockchain concept and my opinion on its viability for the future. In my next video, part of this series, I'll share additional insights from an interview with one of the original authors of the primary research behind the editable blockchain. First, a couple lessons. If someone refers to this concept as the editable blockchain, they have, run, they have only read one or more headlines and probably not the original research. If you hear somebody refer to the concept as the redactable blockchain, it's likely that they've at least read some if not all of the original research. So let's begin with our first topic. Accenture is suggesting that a permission blockchain will benefit from the ability to change transactions, basically perform a do-over. A permission blockchain is a network where the participants can restrict who can participate in the consensus mechanism of the blockchain's network. A network where the trusted entities or companies self-select self -elect themselves as trustworthy. But, but who monitors them? Well, they monitor themselves, or at least that's the theory. Undeniable signatures to practical privacy and chameleon signatures to redactable blockchains. Who's really behind the innovation of the editable blockchain? Accenture, IBM, someone else? Four academics, from the, two from, one from the US, two from Italy, and one from Brazil are the inventors behind this new framework to rewrite or compress the context of blocks. Their joint paper was published on August 5th, 2016. The paper titled Redactable Blockchain or Rewriting History of Bitcoin and Friends expands on the earlier IBM Watson Chameleon Signature Research published back in 2000. Two IBM researchers drafted the Chameleon Signatures in 2000. They introduced these signatures to provide an undeniable commitment of the signer to the contents of the signed document. In short, the enhancement, it's an enhancement over the digital signatures in that the new signature did not allow the recipient of the signature to disclose the substance of the signed information to any third party without the signer's consent. Okay, let's pause. You're probably thinking, refresh me a little bit, where did all this actually start from? As this invention, was this invention really created in 2016? The short answer is no, it's not. It's been an evolution over the last 25 years. Our second topic today is a little bit on the history and the research of the ability to edit the blockchain and how it was born. Zero knowledge proofs remain the foundation of undeniable signatures, a digital signature scheme and implementation presented by David Chom and Hans Andervin in 1989. In January 1992, Bose wrote a dissertation, Practical Privacy, on controlling coding theories, measurement and cryptology. This thesis laid the foundation for advances in cryptology, Crypto 92 Provable Unforgettable Signatures, published in 2001. Provable Unforgettable Signatures improved on the existing schemes by offering signatures that were smaller, where signing and verification required less memory power and compute power. Our third topic 
is going to focus on permissionless versus permission blockchain. The financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 was not only $700 billion. Forbes correctly stated that the Special Inspector General for TARP summarized the total government bailout commitment at $16.8 trillion, with $4.6 trillion already pay out, paid out as of 2015. Fast forward eight years, and Wells Fargo, previously a respected financial firm, on September 8th agreed to a $185 million settlement with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, and the Los Angeles City Attorney. Over 2 million fake bank accounts were created, and Wells Fargo fired 5,300 employees during the period under investigation. It doesn't seem that far away that in 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto spoke of the ability to transfer cash electronically, peer-to-peer, -peer, due to a lack of confidence in these trusted third parties. Trusted third parties can be eliminated from financial transactions in a permissionless blockchain. A permission blockchain depends on trusting entities. Lehman Brothers, AIG, Citigroup, Countrywide, and JP Morgan and Company were all trusted third parties in 2006, all untrusted in 2007. In 2012, Wells Fargo was a trusted third party. By 2016, untrusted. Faith in trusted, the faith in trusted third parties is waning. The public is growing tired of self-created trust. Does the need exist for information in a blockchain to be deleted and not just depend only? Or is this model designed to fail? How is trust established in this imperfect world? Lastly, we've reached our fourth topic today, the redactable blockchain. Accenture just released their most articulate blockchain paper to date, called Editing the Undeniable Blockchain, Why Distributed Ledger Technology Must Adapt to This Imperfect World, apparently based on the original primary work in a redactable blockchain or re rewriting history in Bitcoin and Friends. Since 2009, there's been 157.2 million Bitcoin transactions. None of those transactions were removed, redacted, or rewritten. They were and continued to be immutable. Does removing the immutability of blockchains address human error? During our MIT symposium discussion, How Blockchain Will Transform Digital Economy, my colleague Anders Brownworth of Circle suggested private or permissionless blockchains were equivalent to an internet, cosmetic and functionless. I agree. Is there a difference between a consortium operating a private blockchain and a cartel? Private blockchains are not required to protect IP or privacy. Smart contracts with private code can do this. If you had a choice to bank at a nonprofit bank operating on a public blockchain with smart contracts or at a for-profit bank operating on a private blockchain, where would you bank? The pragmatists believe peer-to-peer -peer trust is possible. Idealists clutch onto a world unchanged, controlled by a self-selected minority. I hope you found today's video beneficial. Please stay tuned for future topics. Thanks.